on the May 2024 What's Neat. George Bogatuck shares with us his techniques as he's building this new layout now on how he does scenery and topography and then builds his roads. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for May 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a really good show in that George Bogatuck shares with us his techniques as he's building this new layout now on how he does scenery and topography and then builds his roads. Also this month, Curtis Koch, for the very first time on this show, He's a director of marketing for Broadway Limited, announces their new Conductors Club, something new, a promotion that Broadway Limited is creating, which has got a lot of interesting perks. Also this month, the wonderful folks from Bachman Industry, in fact, Larry Harrington, we interview him and he shares with us all the newest and latest products this month that Bachman Industry has to offer. And so with that, be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in this, the best hobby in the world, the hobby of model railroading. So let's continue on with the rest of this May 2024 What's Neat. here and this segment of what's neat I'm going to show you how I make roads on my layout now as you can see in this clip here I've done some several roads around the layout various different ways and different shades of gray and then of course we mark the roads accordingly to match how we want the road to be used or in this case some of these are parking lots now I'm going to show you a simple easy way to make realistic roads on your layout using some commercially available components uh, really quick and easy so let's get started so over here this is a section that I've got that I want to build a road up into the neighborhood and then I've got some houses and stuff like that over in this area that I want to build now the first thing normally I would do is I would get the Woodland Scenics paving tape and I would basically outline where I want the roads to go now at this moment in time I don't have a hobby shop nearby so I have to kind of makeshift and so I got this stuff from the Hobby Lobby it's basically some double-sided foam tape um, for $1.29 it's about a quarter inch thick and it comes in a roll like this and so it's kind of the same thing as what the paving tape is but as you can see it's a little bit more accessible so we can just work with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna line up next to the other road where it was and then we're just going to simply put it going up the hill where we want it, where we want the road to go. Now, when I get to the end where the paving tape ends, we just simply take our X-Acto knife. We cut it and we just leave it right there where it is. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. We we'll simply line up where the road ended before. We're going to kind of come up the road, just simply 
using our paving tape. And it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect, but you can get a good idea. And then of course, we're gonna use our tape, I mean our knife, and cut it. And now you can see we've got the place where we wanna do our paving for the road. Pretty simple, you know, nothing super complex or nothing simple or nothing very overly compl complicated. Um, the next thing we'll do is then we wanna make um, the driveways. And so we're basically gonna do the same thing. We kind of line up the tape here. We're gonna go over to where the house is gonna sit. And then we're basically gonna do the same thing. And then we can actually, once we get this cut, now we can go out and cut the middle of this. So that when we lay our tape, we'll have that out here. And then we can reuse our tape if we so choose. Now in this case, I'm gonna use this as the uh, basis for the house that's going to be here uh, foundation so we're simply gonna put, put it there and you want to put the tape on the outside of where you want your roads and your concrete if you put it on the in you know on the line or inside then you may end up with too small of a place than what you want and so therefore you end up shortchanging yourself Really easy. Doesn't take very long to lay this stuff out once you kind of decide where you want all of this to live. Now in here, we're gonna cut a small piece. We're just gonna fit that in there. Now, I'm gonna take the camera over and show you kind of what it looks like. So you can kind of see the footprint of where the house is going to live, which is this house right here. You can see I've kind of got a footprint for where the house is and then where the road is gonna go. Now I'm gonna finish this one over here really quickly and then we'll be right back and show you the next step. Okay, so once you have your tape down and you have your road lines, you can see how quick and easy that was. Now the next step is to actually mix our pavement. Now when I'm doing roads on my layout, I typically use this dab lightweight spackle that you can get uh, at the Home Depot or otherwise, but you want the DAP brand lightweight because what it does is after it dries, it gives you that texture of a road. And then we're actually gonna mix this up a little bit to get the color. And just like any other cheap uh, spackling you can get at the hardware store. And then we're gonna have this little tub. Now in the tub, we're gonna take and mix some of the spackling in there and you can put a lot in here, whatever. Now, the question is, a lot of times people will lay this down and then they have to paint it. But the problem is, is that the paint puts a coat on top of it and doesn't actually mix into it. And so what I usually do is I'll get a bunch of this stuff mixed up in, and then I'll get some paint. And at that point, what I'll do is I'll mix the color in until I get the color of the gray or the concrete that I'm trying to make. And so what I can do here is you can get any of these type of paints at the uh, Walmart. You can get jet black, there's actually one here labeled pavement, um, or you can use gray, but you're mixing it with white. And so you wanna do a little bit at a time and add a little bit at a time until you get the right shade. So as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of this here and then we're just gonna sit and mix this up. 
Now I did already have a little bit in here, so the gray may not have already mixed this fast, but you'll see what happens as I mix this up. You can see that the color is starting to change. And you don't have to worry about the exact color of, of the gray that you want. You can use this and mix it until you get the right shade that you want, but you want to make sure that it's evenly mixed um, so that that way you don't have these white patches of concrete on your layout. And I'm just sitting here mixing it and mixing it and it just it may take a few moments to get all of this incorporated and then once you do you can look at it and decide is this the color of gray that I'm looking for. I typically want to try to incorporate all of it because if you have white spots they will show up. Now granted concrete over the time it's exposed to the sun and it can fade or change color and then we're going to go back and weather this anyway afterward so it doesn't really make that big of a difference so it can help blend all that in because we're going to cover it with a light coat of a thin uh, black to try to simulate the road smudge uh, tire wear um, oil grease things like that that you would find now you can see this mixed up a nice color gray and I'm pretty happy with that and if I compare it to the other side of the colors that I'm trying to match it's pretty close um, like I said it doesn't have to be perfect we're just trying to get a good mix and now comes the easy part not that anything here's been difficult but we simply apply it to the layout so I'm going to turn the camera around over here and hopefully we get a good idea of what we can see. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put this down. And the paving tape helps you keep it in line where you want it to go. And it will also act as your guide and leveling device. So as you apply this, you can use the paving tape as smooth to allow the road to follow the path that you want it to go. And don't worry, this is going to be a little rough. Um, you can always come back, we'll, we'll come back and sand it down to fit the space. But right now we're just trying to get it put in, in there to hold the shape of the road. So you don't need to worry about it being perfect but you want to have it a good coverage as well. So we'll go up here up top, we're going to do the same thing. You can see how easy this applies. And especially when using the tape as your guide because your tape's going to make sure that you have a uniform thickness and a uniform uh, application all the way up and down the hill. Now we're going to come in this driveway here a little bit. for the house. This also gives us a flat surface to mount the house so that that way we can have a place where we can drill for light wires and stuff like that. And the same thing up here on this top one. And you can see it applies pretty easily, just like any other. But 
again, we're going to go back over this, so you don't have to worry about getting it perfect this time. We're just trying to make sure we fill in all the places where we want to have the road so that that way we come back with our leveling trowel, we'll get the effect that we want. are a little tougher to get because I don't have that unfettered access to both sides of it. Okay, so you can kind of see now we've got a good overall shape, nice smooth looking road or at least a level. And we're going to mix that into the existing road that we're attaching. Now remember, roads change over time, so it doesn't always have to be a perfect match either. It's up to you entirely. You can decide how much or how little it matches. So there we go. That looks good. Now, what we're going to do is next we're going to take the next trowel which is close to the width of the road. You ideally want one that's wider than the road, um, but because I'm going up on a hill, I don't have the one that fits best on the road. So I'm gonna make shift with one a little bit smaller, but you'll see basically how it works. Because I'm going up on a hill, but basically you take your trowel and you just kind of go along where the paving tape is and you just kind of smooth it out. Just like that. And you're gonna get a bunch that shows up on your trowel because you put too much out the first time. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now, because this one doesn't fit the full width, I'm putting the pressure on where the tape is and letting the trowel do the work. And again, you've got a handful off. Now, the other thing is because we're mixing this already with the color, we can always come back and patch it up as needed. So in the case like right there where I just screwed it up, we can come back and fix that and patch it up once it dries. Now, again, you're gonna take the same kind of thought and going over, in this case, the house foundation. And you're gonna create a nice smooth for the house. Just like that. And anything that falls outside of where the tape is, you can just scrape it up because you're not going to use it anyway. And that's ideally, now I haven't done any of the hard shell here yet, but once I get this road in, then I can always come back and do that afterward. And you can see I'm pulling up quite a bit. And that's pop. That's probable because with this only being a quarter inch thick, it doesn't take a lot. Pretty easy. Like I said, we can always come back and trim it and touch it up. 
All right, so let's take a look at what it looks like. As you can kind of see, it's fairly smooth. There's some rough patches here and there, and we can fix that up. Uh, we can go in and touch that up right before uh, when we sand it down. But you can see the footprint of the houses, two houses that I have here, and then the road will continue up there. There's a little pothole there, some other stuff. But we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll come back and uh, touch up the, the holes, and then I'll show you how to smooth it out and make it drivable for your HO scale or other scale model vehicles. So we'll be back in just a little bit. Okay guys, so it's been a few days and we've let the roads dry. So I'm gonna show you really quickly kind of what they look like. Now you can see in some cases the foam tape has come up a, a little bit, that's okay. And you can see some uh, you know, imperfections in here, but we're gonna fix all that. So the first thing we wanna do, and I'm gonna try to set this camera so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now that the camera's set, now that the uh, road is set and dried, we can actually take up the foam. Uh, a lot of times I like to use a X-Acto knife just to make sure there's a nice smooth edge. Uh, sometimes you don't need it, it'll pull right up, but sometimes you may need to use it. In this particular case, it looks like it's coming up pretty easily. <clears throat> get a trash can to put all this stuff in. And remember, it doesn't need to be perfect right now. We're just trying to, you know, get an edge on the side of it. We're gonna put some uh, stuff on the side of the road there to try to blend it into the scenery. And as you know, here in this particular place, I haven't put anything on the, uh, there's no ground cover or anything like that. It's literally the bare styrofoam, which is fine because we'll run some tape over here and try to, and try to uh, uh, protect the roads when we put down the ground cover, such as uh, plaster, sculpt the mold and such. So, okay. Now, as you can see, just peeling the tape up. And if there is some that's on the outside, like for this piece, for example, you can just peel it up, it doesn't matter. That's what ground cover's for. It covers all of that stuff up. All right, now we're gonna come over here. <clears throat> and you can kind of see what it's doing. It's basically just peeling up. It's giving me the edge that we're looking for. Apparently I need to glue that down a little better because this is really loose right here. So that'll get glued down a little better. And we're gonna show you, we can peel this piece up here. That's a big old chunk. And this is the driveway for the other home. It's gonna be over here in the corner. And again, it doesn't matter if you pull up some styrofoam or whatever, who cares? We'll put some ground cover over it and give you some irregularities here. Boy, this is really loose. I didn't realize this was this bad over here, but that's okay. We're going to fix all this. Oops. There we go. All right. And you can kind of see the road taking shape, but we've got some pretty big potholes and stuff like that here. We're gonna smooth all that out here in just a moment. Um, just wanna finish getting this tape up. This is the little walkway up to the front of the house that's gonna be sitting right here. And again, this is all stuff I just drew out on the, uh, on the foam here to decide where everything was gonna sit. Yeah, there's a big piece, bunch of stuff right here. Again, all this can, anything that's not where you want it to be can be peeled up, doesn't matter. Like I said, all that's gonna get covered. All right. Okay, there we go. So now you can see all the tape has been peeled up. And you can kind of see there's some rough spots over here and there. Uh, like I said, there's a big pothole here. This is kind of rough. 
Um, but don't worry too much about it because this is just the first pass. Now that gets us our border. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna take a sanding block and they make these, these are just a, a sponge sanding block. They make them in several different uh, thickness or, or coarseness. And usually what I like to use is use the fine um, because it gives us a nice cover. And so we're just gonna simply sand the road down. And that's how we're gonna get a smooth transition here between what was already done and what we're adding right now. And this will also let us know where we need to um, put some more of the uh, concrete, the, the, um, the spackle mix that we made prior. Now we still have some in the same color. And so what we're doing here is we're just smoothing this out. We're gonna figure out where everything fits. Figure out where we need it. And this is kind of a complex shape because we're going up a hill and around a curve. So don't stress too much about it. If you look at real roads, there's a lot of imperfections going up in a hill and around a corner as well. So then we're gonna come into this driveway over here where this house foundation. Now again, I do the same thing for foundations. Now here in this case, you can kind of see here's a house and this is where this house is gonna sit. So now I have a flat surface that the house will sit and then we have our driveway coming up into the garage on the back side. So gives us a nice flat surface and then you can make this whichever color you want or you can leave it gray like I did. Ultimately, it doesn't make a big difference. Just trying to get a smooth place for the house. And remember, we're, this is where we have to drive cars so we can test things and see how it how it fits in. So, you know, we have our car, we have our, our roads kind of smoothed out here. We can take just a car and just kind of see how it fits. And you know what, that goes pretty smooth. Same thing coming down, but as we know, there's a couple of potholes that we have to fix. But this is what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna get to this far house over here. And once this is done, and you've done your sanding and everything, you can come back with a, a vacuum cleaner, clean up all this excess stuff that's peeling up, and then reevaluate where it's at. And then you can go in and touch it up. All right, just like that. And now this house will fit in up in there just like that. So you can see how that house fits on the on the foundation. We got a little driveway next to it. So it all fits really well. So now we take a vacuum cleaner to it and I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll come back and I'll show you to patch up any of these, any of these holes uh, that we found in here, how easy it is and then Next step, once that's done and we dried and we sanded it down again, then we stripe. So I'm gonna vacuum off the camera. Okay, everything's, everything's vacuumed up and smooth. And you kind of see there is a slight difference in pavement color here. It's not that big a deal. Um, they rewrite or redo roads all the time. And so you'll see differences in color. But once we come in and spray some weathering down here, you won't really notice much of a difference. Um, but you can see there's a little patch here that needs to be done, little one over here, maybe this one here on the driveway, a little bit here between the two. And looking back here, there's a couple, there's a big one right there, and a little one right there. So what we can do is we can, and this one, wow, look at that. Well, the good news is it's fixable. Remember, it's scenery, guys. It's not set in stone. You can always go back and fix it. Mother Nature changes all the time. We can too. So now we're just going to take our smaller putty knife just kind of come in and since we've sanded we kind of have an idea of where the road is going to be 
So we can come in here and just lay our touch up, touch up uh, uh, spackling down. Like I said, don't stress too much about it. Real roads crack and stuff all the time. So this is really easy. And it gives your road character too. Because we're going to come back in and sand it anyway. We're going to sand it again once this second coat is dry. There we go. Because we want to make sure we have a smooth surface. Don't be afraid to leave a pothole. Heck, that gives us some uh, that gives us some character on our road. And that's the other advantage is by painting this ahead of time, we can actually go in and dig a pothole out if we so choose, and it doesn't really make that big of a difference because the concrete all the way through, or in this case, the spackling all the way through is the same color. So we don't have to worry about trying to paint everything after the fact. And if it cracks or, or whatever the case is afterward, so be it. It'll have a little bit of character. Guys, that was pretty simple. So now we get now when I'm looking at this, you can see there's some drastic differences. But what's happening is is what we're seeing is the difference between wet and dry. So once this dries, you'll see some differences, kind of like what you can see here in this foundation for the depot. But again, once we put some weathering on there, you'll never notice a difference. And you know what? Real roads get patched all the time, so it's not that big a deal. go all right I think I'm happy with that like I said it's pretty simple and easy and you can use this for whatever you want in this case um, I was using it to kind of fill in some patches here and to smooth the foam between this level and the ground and then we just laid our concrete road on top of it so uh, now we're gonna let it sit and dry for a couple of days and then we'll do another sanding and then we'll come back and take a look at it so uh, be back here in a few days after it dries. For you, it'll be just a few seconds. Okay, now it's been a couple of days since we did the patchwork, so let's go ahead and take a look. You can kind of see where some of that patchwork has been done, but that's not a big deal because, like I said, we're going to go in and sand this down, and then all of this is going to get weathered, so all of that will be a lot harder to distinguish. So, again, we're just going to take our sanding block, Come in and sand it down. And you can already kind of see from this first one up here how it's kind of disappearing. The patches are kind of disappearing. And you can see this over here a little bit. As we go up the road, the patches are kind of blending in. So now you can see it doesn't look as blotchy. So I'm gonna finish sanding, and then I'm gonna actually come in here and paint the sides of this so that that way it's a little bit easier to see the road itself. And then we'll do the next part of the road laying, which is striping. So in just a few seconds, I'll be back, but this will be a little bit later uh, in my real time. And now you can see after I touched up the paint, oh, we got a little bit of a, leak over there that's all right again weathering that'll take care of everything so now the roads are a little more defined than what they were and uh, we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and start doing the road striping okay guys we're back here at the layout um, just want to let you know this video is running a little long so I think what we're gonna do 
is break this up into two sections. So you can see the road and you can see some modifications and some changes. I've added some ground cover and some ground foam coverage uh, ready to build in uh, the neighborhood here. But as far as the striping is concerned and road weathering, I think we're going to do that as a separate video. So this is going to be the end of this segment of What's Neat and look forward for part two. We'll see you that time. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Curtis Coke from beautiful, warm Florida. Curtis, from Broadway Limited Imports down there in Florida. How awesome How is that? How are you doing, Ken? Dude, I just want to come to Florida right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in right now because as we're filming this, it's pouring rain outside. Okay. Maybe in a couple of days, definitely come down here. Been going through the same thing here. So you've got something really special that you want to talk about on the show today that you want to get the word out. Yeah, so we announced back in January um, our Conductors Club membership. And that membership includes a ton of great perks. It includes perks such as an additional year of warranty on all new BLI products that you purchase in 2024. Um, it's only $30 a year, but you get, besides the additional warranty, you get 10% off our online outlet store, um, which features many different refurbished models, um, some older models that have been sent in for repair um, from dealers and stuff like that. And we repurpose them and resell them. Sometimes um, if a, a modeler um, unfortunately happens to pass away, sometimes they send those models to us and we re refurbish them and get them uh, ready to be sent out and uh, for purchase for another customer to enjoy them. Um, so we have a lot of different uses for this membership. And on top of that, you also will get insider news on a quarterly newsletter on all new products that we're doing, um, some tips that we have for keeping your models um, uh, up to speed and making sure that they're all running smoothly, um, different things like that. We're going to incorporate a lot of really neat stuff into that quarterly newsletter for um, members. And uh, on top of that, you get a great exclusive opportunity to purchase um, HO and N scale locomotives um, once a year from us at a really, really great price. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a great addition to um, not only just your uh, modeling habits and everything like that, because it's going to add a lot of uh, additional value to your model railroading, but it's also a great way to get great locomotives um, at a great price. Wow. And I'm seeing some pretty models behind you right there. Yeah. So for HO scalers, we've got the uh, HO scale uh, challengers, um, the 3985 uh, as it was an excursion service and the 3977 okay. um, as it sits at Cody Park in uh, North Platte, Nebraska, um, painted in that uh, two-tone Greyhound scheme, which is a, a great scheme for um, some steam locomotive or something different other than just the black that you would typically see on it. Um, and it's got a great, great look to it. We haven't done these since Paragon 3, so we're excited to bring these back for a one-time exclusive um, offer for our members. And for those members who are already Conductors Club members, you can get those challengers from us, the sound version at least, for $349.99. Okay. Um, and with the purchase of a Paragon 4 locomotive from us, from this Conductors Club exclusive, you also get a Rolling Thunder receiver for free from wow, us. Cool. Um, so these locomotives are going to come in really unique packaging. So um, not just our typical Paragon uh, 4 boxes that you see now, but right. um, they're going to feature a lot of new uh, updates in terms of some of the, the details on the paint, as well as new sounds on these challengers as well. As I said, we haven't done these since Paragon 3, so they're in a bit of a revamp. Um, so update. So these will be brand brand new challengers with some new sounds and some um, additional little details on it. Um, we've got on the back of the 3985, we've got the fuel gauge um, on there with the measuring uh, measurements on the side there. Um, and then on the 3977, we've got the polished rods um, yes. too. So it'll look just super sharp. Yeah. Um, in the long run. And those smoke deflectors look really nice, too. Yes, exactly. So yeah, that's great. That's and, a, 349 is a good price. Yeah, and if, if sound isn't your thing or you prefer to add an aftermarket um, decoder of your choice, we are offering these in stealth, too. Um, the stealth price on these, Ken, is $249.99. So for a die-cast okay. challenger with all the details included and everything like that, you get a stealth locomotive for $249.99. That's okay. very, very good pricing for anybody who's looking to either 
get into the hobby at a more affordable price point or who's looking to add a little bit of customization to their challengers, uh, um, it's a great, great option for you to get that as well. Agreed. Important note for stealth customers, though, is, is that we are only making a small batch of these, okay. and the factory has asked us to put in a, min uh, put in a minimum purchase order. Um, so if you are wanting to get our stealth versions of these locomotives, you have to get your orders in ASAP because if we don't meet that minimum threshold for stealth customers, we will have to unfortunately cancel that. Okay. Um, so the order deadline for these is May 30th. So make sure that if you are wanting the stealth ones, get your orders in ASAP. Okay, that's really cool. And I should mention too, one last thing about the Challenger before we move on. Okay. And this goes with the big boys that we'll talk about as well, um, is that we are requiring a $100 um, down payment on them first, and that includes shipping. And then and you will be charged the rest of the uh, balance when they arrive um, in November, uh, early December. Okay. No, that's, that's uh, they're beautiful. The N scale ones are beautiful. The HO scale yeah. ones are beautiful. And the N scale ones too, we got the uh, big boy, the 4014 and the 4019. Okay. Um, 4019 has the smoke deflectors on it. Um, the real locomotive, the real 4019 wore smoke deflectors. Um, for about four ish months between 1944 and 1945 during the winter, um, Union Pacific wanted to experiment with that and see how it worked. And they ultimately decided to kind of scrap that for the other big boys. Um, so they ended up just keeping this, the smoke deflectors off of them. But it's such a cool, cool, unique thing. And there's only like one or two photos of 4019 wearing the smoke deflectors like that ever exist. And uh, it's such a really cool model for end scalers. And we're bringing them back with smoke. And scalers have loved the smoke. I know you got a Reading T1 on the t on the table there, I do. Um, and those were another one of our end scale offerings that have smoke in them. So we're excited to bring those back as well. Um, and we are offering again. If you missed the 4014, the the big boy that runs today on the main line um, in our first run, we are bringing that back too. But this time, instead of giving you the decal of the big boy chalk to um, install yourself, we're actually putting it on there for you. Um, and the same thing with these is that you'll get them um, in Paragon 4 Sound or Stealth. Um, the Paragon 4 price point on these is a great price of $299.99. That's awesome. And the Stealth DCC Ready with the speakers already installed, if you wanted to add sound yourself, is $199.99. So for a highly detailed end scale big boy, you can get that for $200. Bucks. So it's a great deal, great offering. Um, same thing as I mentioned before, if you wanted to buy the Paragon 4 version, you would get that with the Rolling Thunder receiver um, absolutely free. And again, in, in a really unique box and everything like that. So make sure, again, if a big boy is on your wish list for end scale, <laughs> you got to get those orders in ASAP. That's pretty neat. I've got a lot of beautiful models on the table that you have sent over the months that we have featured on the podcast, I believe. And, and you've had it on your uh, website, too, with regards to some of the photography. But all of these models, now the exclusive thing is with Broadway Limited for the membership, membership only. But all these other beautiful models, I know the boys up in Chicago at Lombard Hobbies, they stock this stuff, don't they? Because yeah, they stock them. Um, I actually talked to um, the guys at Lombard. They were next to us at Amherst. Okay. And they stock a lot of our stuff. They told us that they had 100 and I think 16 orders of the GS4s, one of our most wow. recent releases. <laughs> so they take a lot of our stock. So if you're looking for a great deal on uh, stock from our locomotives, the Lombard Hobbies is a great spot to go visit. Um, if you want to find a dealer near, near you too, you can go ahead and on our website where Lombard Hobbies is listed along with a bunch of other ones as well. Okay. Um, but we absolutely love Lombard. They're great. They store a lot of our stuff. They're good. Um, and yeah. a lot of the stuff you see on the table, they probably have there in stock now. Um, and if you can't uh, find it there, you can always find more details about the information on these products on our website, broadway-limited.com. Right, and that Southern Pacific locomotive you just described is not on the table because I'm running <laughs> it around the layout today and I'm loving watching it run. <laughs> Actually, it's been running for three days. I've been putting it through its paces and so far so good. And the top speed on it's amazing. It runs great. Yeah, and the sounds were recorded off of it come from the 4449, the famous yes. daylight that still is restored and operates today. So it's a, a great sounding model as well. And uh, it's just a great addition with so many different paint schemes and stuff. Um, I just wanted to also make a note for other dealers out there who are wondering about the Conductors Club. This is a once a year thing, so they don't have to worry about new projects being membership exclusives or anything like that. 
Um, this is only for customers on a once a year thing. So all new projects going forward are still going to be available at your dealers first before they get considered um, for the Conductors Club in the future. There you go. That's a good business, man. Is there any, anything else in closing? Uh, well, we just recently announced sticking with the Union Pacific theme. Um, we just recently announced that the Rocky Mountain Train Show, we are uh, releasing an HO scale, the Union Pacific business car 119, uh, also known as Kenefic. Wow. Um, and we're offering several different versions of that. We're offering the regular version with the UP Herald on the grates on the observation platform. We're offering them in three lighted drumhead versions, one with 4014 on tour, one with the spirit of Union Pacific, and the last offering of the lighted drumhead will be the George Bush uh, funeral train version um, with the presidential seal on the drumhead on the back wow. of the car. Um, <laughs> and we're also offering an unpainted version, so if you like to get creative with that, um, you can paint one of these cars, just the shell, at least. We'll be paint, you could paint it to your own railroad and be creative with that. We love seeing how people can get customized with that sort of stuff. Um, and so these cars will have uh, great details, car-specific details, and they'll also have um, uh, specifically controllable lighting. So you can control the marker lights, you can control the interior lights, you can control the ditch lights, okay. and you can also uh, control the observation platform lights. So it'll be really, really well done. Uh, never before made in plastic um, in HO scale. Um, you can commonly find them in brass. Right. Um, the MSRP on these cars is $129.99, oh, wow. but you could order them through Lombard Hobbies or through your dealer for about uh, $103.99, about 20% off of wow. the MSRP. Okay. Okay. I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll right. look perfect behind your challengers your big boys or your fefs all the locomotives we've done in ho scale recently there you go well when you get some of that warm sunny awesome weather you got to send it up here to us <laughs> i'll send it uh, overnight mail overnight express <laughs> i love it you're awesome i love working with you and i wish you all the best thank you very much for helping us understand the new club that you've got here this sounds like a great opportunity yeah it's a great opportunity take advantage of it while you can and uh, we got more exclusive stuff coming next year, too. So make sure you sign up now to get yours then. You're awesome. And check out Curtis on the What's Neat podcast because he comes and hangs out with us once in a while. And with that, that ends this segment for What's Neat. For this segment of May's video, we've got Larry Harrington from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from Bachman Industries with the new product update for this month of May. Hey, Larry. Hey, Ken, how are you doing this fine day? <laughs> it's an awesome day. It's great to have you. And it's gorgeous weather here. It's finally, the weather's finally starting to break here. And get rid of that winter cold. Yes, amen. Been working on the Garden Railroad out here and just loving the weather. So what do you got to talk about today, Larry? Well, we got lots of stuff to talk about today. It's been a couple months since I've been on the show, but um, stuff keeps pouring in every day. Um, we have uh, may have shown, shown some previous pre-production samples of this, but this is our Amtrak ALC 42. Um, we have our well, first one was the, the day one scheme. Nice. And <laughs> these come complete with TCS full wow sound. Uh, they have lots of lighting functions. They're, they're basically the equivalent of their HO Big Brother. Um, all the same features on the ALC 42. Um, and same same exact decoder, except it's a little bit smaller. Um, this is the uh, Phase 6 paint scheme. We have this in two road numbers. Sweet. That's nice. So, yeah, they turned out very nice. We're real happy with this whole project. Um, and this does this has complete functionality. Just like I said, it has the, the side light will light up. It has uh, keep alive features. It has audio assist. Everything that the big big brother HOs have. This this is the phase seven scheme. We also have this in two road road numbers. So tremendous uh, response. I was I took these the pre production samples to the N scale convention last year. They had already had the um, 
SC44 is out in the, in the production, and everybody came to the booth. So, man, that 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 locomotive was a home run. So we we just uh, we're happy we're real happy with the project, how it turned out. Um, great cooperation from Amtrak and Siemens, and we just uh, you know like to keep things rolling. So no, you got to give you guys credit though. The design work, the thought that went into these projects, um, and I want to talk about this on the podcast, and I haven't yet. But if you look at these HO scale engines I've got on the table, which are the Siemens engines, right? The Correct. Via, um, the front ends of each one are a little bit different. You have designed it like the prototype so that as per the prototype's orders for Via, which is different than Amtrak, you've got the different front ends. I was so impressed with that. I just, I'm sorry to take you off of topic. That's okay. That's uh. That was an important feature of the, the lo you know the locomotive project was to be able to um, you know tooling is very expensive um, especially for something that we um, had nothing but a coupler um, to use in the project everything else was from scratch new truck blocks new truck sides right. um, body diecast uh, um, chassis um, the you know the the uh, operation of the side interior work light. That actually illuminates on all the models, um, and it's controllable in DCC to turn them, turn it on and off as well. Um, it's just uh, you know I, I said in a previous show that you know I was out to uh, the recording session with TCS when we went out to the TTCI test facility, and it was uh, it was a great experience to be able to, to sit back and um, we were there for two days operating the locomotive in, in park, basically, but we were able to make just about every noise that that locomotive makes, including um, a dust filtration motor, which is very quiet, but we recorded it anyway. And um, so uh, it has everything built in. They, the sounds will come on, you know, as prototypically they would random points. And um, so it's it was a lot of fun to do that and to see what actually goes into the recording session and, and uh, and to get it to work in the HO and the N scale models has been a, a good experience for me. If you guys go to whatsneat.com, you can index that subject matter of recording the sounds for this locomotive. We had uh, Dan Michio on the show from TCS and he narrated right. us through that entire video. We sped it up a little bit, the video itself, but all the meat and potatoes were still there on what you guys went through. It was fantastic to see the effort that has made to make these models that much better. Including a thunderstorm that came through that we had to pull down all the boom mics uh, so we wouldn't get electrocuted so uh, it was, uh, or destroy the equipment. So that was a little bit of excitement there when we were out there. Right. Okay, uh, I got you way off topic on what you're- okay. Okay, go keep it's Talking up. trains, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we're not off topic. <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> So yeah, let's go up into IHO scale. Um, we've been waiting for this project for a while. Um, these are our Dash 8 locomotives. Um, these will come with um, sound value from TCS. Um, you know, as many of us were affected by the supply chain, this was one of the locomotives that, that got pushed off production because of the supply chain issues. Finally got all the parts in for everything we needed and we're, it's, it's, I'll be coming in stock relatively soon. We have this available in uh, you know, Norfolk Southern. Um, and we have Santa Fe. Always a crowd pleaser, right? Um, CSX. There you go. Get my fingers out of the way here, so you can see the whole thing. There's the front. There's the back. And I also want to show off our packaging a little bit here this is the uh union pacific version try not to get too much of a glare on the on the nice. camera there but um yes. that's our new packaging for this style locomotive so they'll they should be coming in relatively shortly from um i guess in a month or so we'll have them in stock but those were our factory paint samples that we uh production line samples um the other day we got in uh, also an ho is our trinity hopper um this is oh, a wow. Trinity 5161 three bay covered hopper. Um, I don't know how well the details will show up on this, but it's uh, got see through grills. That's on nice. the walkway um, underneath. We got that. We have uh, 
Let me see if you can see that details on the side there from the airlines and stuff. No, it's right. fantastic. So this is um this will be coming out. And we're 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 listening to you know customers have been asking us to try to do uh, multiple road numbers. So this is one of the ones we're going to try it on. Um, we've have four different road names. We have CSX, BNSF, um, Canadian Pacific, and Norfolk Southern. You can go on our website and, and look at our current catalog, um, BachmanTrains.com. Click on catalogs and you can flip through the catalog. You'll actually be able to see the, the paint schemes that we'll have. Um, we don't have painting samples for those yet, but they'll be in in a couple months. They'll probably be in a future show. We'll show those off. Um, so we did two road numbers in each of the paint schemes. So we'll see how, uh, how well it does. So nice. When we initially announced that we only had one road number, so we went to, uh, and we added a second road number. So hopefully it, it'll pay off. Next up for um, showcase here is um, my line. Uh, I came from my roots, the Williams trains. We got the easy street cars. This is like a 1960s, late 50s, 60s uh, station wagon style. It's got the good old roof luggage rack on top there. I got this in a, a gold um, color that was typical of the time. Um, also the same same vehicle in blue. Very nice. Again, with the luggage rack on top. And then with the tooling, we, we tried to incorporate some extra um, items. Um, so we made a different roof snap on for this. Um, here's a hearse. It's basically still a station wagon, but it's uh, it now looks like a hearse with the bumped up on the roof there. And, and this also, goes with the easy street line, right? Yes. Is that, and, and you guys also make track the little roads for these to drive on. Yeah, that, and you can bring more animation to your your um, your O gauge layout, um, right. the layout by adding the, the little bit of motion to your vehicle. So we have a pretty extensive line of vehicles now. Um, here's there's my favorite is the ambulance. Um, again, nice. So selling very well. Um, so they yeah they they'll go they'll run um, on AC or DC power. Um, they're they're set to run in forward, but if you wanted to add a, a decoder or something to them, you could do that. Have a little more control. Um, we don't offer them that configuration, but it's entirely possible to do so. Add some lights. Um, you know, make it a little more um, realistic for your layout. So, um, and that's that's the O gauge line. And then finally, finally, I have uh, the big big behemoth here is the okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> GP40 Sweet. scale. Let's see if I can get it all on the screen here. I got to go way that. back to do so. I can tell you those do run in the rain. I have run those in the rain. They will run in the rain. Yep. Fantastic. This has got two motors in it. It's a pretty hefty unit. Um, so it's set up so that it can be used for multiple control configurations. So you pop off the, the brake blister off the top and you have access to some control switches there. Nice. Yes. And you can, it's got a smoke unit um, and it also has. Um, number of uh, switches to control the lighting and um, smoke unit, the battery on and off, and also the polarity, so you can run it in either NMRE standard or, or G scale standard. That's that's amazing. The smoke unit's amazing. It's got a fan in it, and it looks great on video when the train runs by. Or you put the camera on top of the train and you're filming it, and that smoke's coming out. Oh, it's cool. I know. Yeah, the, the smoke yep. unit it took us a while to, to design it so that. It, you know, these running outside, you have to watch heat issues sometimes. So it, it will, it has protection built into it so that if it's, if the unit gets too hot, the combination of the, the unit being on plus being in the sun, it will cool itself down and then it'll work again after it's uh, cooled down to a safe temperature. So that's, that's awesome, dude. That's fantastic. I uh, just, I just, what are you going to do? That would even look good on a shelf. You don't have to have a oh, garden yeah. railroad. Just to have that in the layout room, it's an impressive model. Plus, have you seen those weathered yet? They look dynamite. <laughs> so, yeah, they should be in later this year as well. So we're looking forward. That come, that's also comes in four road names. There you go, Larry. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that the lineup for May? 
that's the lineup for you today. Um, let me get the the road names for the. Uh, I was a little more. There we go. It's uh, that comes with uh, in the CSX I just showed. It'll be a Norfolk Southern as well, Santa Fe Blue and Yellow Freight Scheme, and then Union Pacific as well for those. So very very cool. And I just my everybody's eyes while you've been talking have been wandering around the shelves behind you. The backdrop is amazing, Larry. Yeah, it's a lot of history back there with a number of uh, projects. We have, you know, other ones over there, some large-scale items over there. There you go. <laughs> some Williams items over here, some sets and buildings over there. So, yeah, we try to keep a, a good offering of our um, products in our showroom. So when we have meetings and such, we can you know show off our line. That's awesome, Larry. Thank you very much for sharing all the new products with the viewers of What's Neat. And with that, we wrap up this segment for May's video on What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. 